Hi and welcome back to a new video today on a Friday. I just received an XOC BIOS for my 4090 Strix, which should be quite interesting. In one of the previous videos, we were applying or soldering the Elmore EVC to the card, which allows voltage control for the 4090 Strix. But then we also straight figured out that if we increase the voltage only by like 100 millivolt, we instantly hit the power limit of 600 watt. And then I said that we probably have to perform a power mod to make use of the additional voltage and especially for extreme overclocking, which is something we're going to do in the next days, we would need more power. But with the Exosy BIOS, it seems like we don't have to do these physical modifications anymore. Can just flash the BIOS and have 1000 watt unlocked power target. That should be quite interesting. That is something I want to try today. Probably also going to mount this tiny GPU only container the EK thermosphere quite old, but should be sufficient for the Strix because right now I don't have a full cover water block. But the thing is with the XOC BIOS, it does not have any kind of temperature protection, which means that if you run into some thermal issues, whatever, if your GPU hits temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius, it can just die. There is like no temperature protection anymore that would lower the voltages, that would lower the clocks. That is something you definitely have to keep in mind. So if you get your hands on the XOC BIOS, flash it with caution and use it with caution. Ideally only with custom water block and you have to be sure that your mount is perfect. Any mistake in mounting can instantly kill your GPU. So we will get to the flashing in a second, but there is one issue, unfortunately, I'm facing with my 4090 Strix we quickly have to talk about. Right now, I'm still just running the stock BIOS on the 4090 Strix. You can also see that by just looking into the power limit, which you can still adjust in the MSI Afterburner. But the problem I have, unfortunately, with my Strix, it's only running X8 4.0. But I have no idea how this happened and at which point it happened. I can only say that when I got the card first, everything was working fine at a point when I was attaching the EVC and that's completely not related to the EVC. It's like there's no correlation. When I was testing the EVC, it was also still X16. It just happened afterwards. I'm not quite sure at which point, but I did not even have removed the cooler at this point. So it's also not related to maybe cooler removal where you could theoretically damage some BGAs or whatever. Also, it seems like the PCI Express slot, at least physically, is not damaged. I even provided images to experts on my Discord and they also checked it. They could not find anything that's like related to traces, for example. Yeah, it's un just unfortunate. Sometimes things like these happens out of nowhere. That's just how it goes. It could be an issue once we use this card because that's what we're going to do for liquid nitrogen overclocking to chase some records because losing two or three percent, that's typically what you lose with this bandwidth penalty. Yeah, that's something we will probably not be able to make up for, but we will do it anyway. But let's get to the BIOS flashing finally. The good thing is with the Strix, we have this BIOS switch, which allows to use two different BIOSes at once. Right now it's still in the stock position. That's what you just use for any kind of normal testing, pretty much the performance BIOS. Now I will switch it to, I think it's the quiet BIOS, something like this, which I don't need. And on this position, I will just flash the XOC BIOS on. That's quite convenient because then for whatever testing, I can just always switch it back and forth, whatever I need. To flash the BIOS, I prepared a folder that contains NV Flash, the BIOS itself, and also a command, which we just run as administrator. Before we do anything, though, we will quickly save the stock BIOS just by typing NV Flash minus minus save and then just some BIOS name. I almost forgot that in Device Manager, prior to do any kind of flashing, also disable the 4090 first. And to flash, just type NV flash, then select the card itself with the index zero, minus six is to flash the card, and then simply go for it. It's quite quick to flash, then simply shut down, make sure to power off your entire system, and then power it back on. Then after a reboot being back in Windows, you can see in MSI Afterburner, we can no longer adjust the power limit. It's always set to 100%. And we will quickly perform a full screen render test simply to get some load data on the 4090, like in the back lock on the sensor tab of GPUZ. So we can tap back out, then go to sensors. And now our load scenario, if we scroll down to board power draw, it should be this right here. So it's about 315 watts. If we scroll down to power consumption, it equals 31%, which means that we can basically 
multiply this by 3 and then we're getting about 1000 watt possible power draw. This state and also this quick test even with running the GPU-Z render node is not really a risk even if we use the Exo-Z BIOS with like disabled thermal protection. But I don't really want to go further like I don't want to adjust any voltages right now with the EVC. For that I want to change to this tiny water block. As I said before it's like an older EK thermosphere. Originally this was for NVIDIA G80, so at 8800 GTX, I think it was like 2006, 2007. Also it doesn't have too much surface area, but it should be sufficient together with the Mora that is sitting underneath my table to get some kind of decent temperatures, maybe like 45 to 50 degrees Celsius under load, just to make sure that we're not instantly blowing up the cart. Also got some feline support now to mount the water block. The good thing with the 4090 is that these mounting holes right here have a quite huge diameter. So even using M3 screws is totally fine. Attached four of them to the block. We'll mount it now and then include it into the water loop. I added the card to the loop. It's running right now, but there is no active cooling for the power stages or also for the memory. But as long as we don't do it, like any heavy testing such as Furmark should be absolutely fine. Worst case, I will just place a fan in front. Temperatures in times by look okay. It's somewhere between 45 and like 50 degrees Celsius should give us enough headroom to increase the voltage slightly to aim for let's say 700, maybe 750 watts just to see if we can get an increase in performance and also if we can get an increase in clocks. In the EVC control, I'm now applying an offset of 50 millivolts simply to see what kind of impact it has on power consumption and also if it does any change or any scaling with the clocks. Now the cool thing is also because it can check the temperature of our voltage supply. You can see this should now drastically increase without the active cooling and we can keep track on if we're entering an area that should be concerning or if it's still fine. But just from the first look, kind of looks like it's okay. I decided to add a fan underneath. Now I'm running about 1.2 volt. We can see that the BIOS is working as intended, but yeah, 730 watt power draw. That's insane. And I definitely need active cooling at this point for the VRM, even though just running a short benchmark test, yeah, I feel much safer doing it this way. As you can see, under load closing into 90 degrees on the VRM. Benchmark run is over now, so it's dropping, but yeah, active cooling was definitely necessary. The times by extreme score in GT1 is only slightly increased compared to stock, but stock was also with 16 lanes and not with eight lanes. So yeah, it's not too bad. We got some performance uplift, but yeah, still suffering from only X8. But looking at our clocks, we can run like 30, 30, 30, 60 sometimes in here, but check out GPU temperature. It's hitting 70 degrees Celsius under load. And that's with like water cooling. It's not the best water cooling, but it's, it's still water cooling. And these clocks also seem to be the limit for now, at least with this cooling method, because if we increase the voltage even further, maybe to 1.25, 1.3 volt, we are drastically increasing power consumption, which is increasing temperature. And that's counterproductive for the result for the clocks. Because I think the like lower temperatures, which we had just with the normal like GPU only water cooling at about 45 to 50 degrees Celsius are definitely more beneficial for the clock itself. But in the end, we're still testing this for XOC, which we're going to do very soon. And there, I hope we will not have any kind of cooling issues. But I mean, anyway, for like 24 seven usage, you don't want to have a card pulling like 750 watt under load. It's, at least I don't want to have something like this. And I assume that you also don't want to see something like this in your system. But interesting to see what kind of power numbers we can see. Everything seems to be working with no power mod. We can increase the voltage. Now, the only thing that's missing is better cooling. That's what we're going to do in a video that's coming very soon. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.